Lesson 1-1 is entitled Points, Lines, and Planes. And in this section, we're going to end up defining a lot of terms that we'll be using in the rest of this course. So to start with, a point. A point is defined as a location. It has no dimension, and it is named by an uppercase printed letter. And here's a couple ways that we can designate it. So you can actually draw the point and then label with an uppercase printed A next to it. I can write out the word point A, and again I use an uppercase printed letter, or just the uppercase printed A. So whenever you see an uppercase printed letter, you know that that refers to a point. Our second term is a line. A line is the set of points through any two given points. So if I'm given two points, it's all of the points that go through those two points. <clears throat> it has no width or depth. It is named by any two points on the line or by a lowercase cursive letter. So looking at this diagram here, so I have a line and it has two points on it, A and B, and I know that those are points because they are uppercase printed letters. And then there's a lowercase cursive M over here by the arrow, by one of the arrows. So I can name this line AB because that's two points on the line, and I would write it like this, uppercase printed A, uppercase printed B, and then a line over the top, and notice there are arrows on the ends. As we'll see in a couple sections, if there are no arrows on the ends, it actually refers to the segment, but in this case we're talking about the whole line that continues infinitely. I can also name this line BA, the order of the letters doesn't matter. I can write out the word line AB, in which case I don't have to put a line over the top of it, line BA, or I can use this lowercase cursive letter that's out here by the arrow, so I can refer to this as M or line M. And the third shape we're going to take a look at is a plane. A plane is a flat surface that extends infinitely in all directions. Now, when I drew this, I can't really draw something that extends infinitely in all directions, and unlike a, a, a line, I can't really put arrows on the edge here, so I draw this parallelogram to represent the plane, um, and I slant it because we're looking at it kind of three-dimensionally, and it does extend in all directions infinitely, but I can't really represent that in the way I draw it. It contains at least three points that are not on the same line. It has no depth, and it is named by any three points that are not on the same line, or by an uppercase cursive letter. <clears throat> so here on this plane I have points A, B, and C, and you'll notice I cannot draw one line that contains all three of those points. So those are points that are not on the same line, and so I can name this plane ABC, ACB, BAC, or any combination of those three letters, as I've done here. So any one of those will work. The order of the letters doesn't matter. Or you'll notice that in the lower right-hand corner here, I have a cursive uppercase R, okay? So I can refer to this as plain R as well. Here's a couple more terms. Collinear. Collinear means lying on the same line. So looking at this diagram right here, points A, B, and C are collinear because they all lie on that line. But if I want to talk about points A, B, and D, consider those three points together, those are non-collinear because I cannot draw one line that contains points A, B, and D. Another term is coplanar, and that means lying in the same plane. So looking at this diagram here, points E, F, and G all lie on this plane. But point H is down here, not on the plane, it's actually on a line that goes through the plane. So then I could say that points E, F, G, and H are non-coplanar. Also, take a look at the diagram here. So I have my parallelogram representing the plane, and it's kind of at a slant because I'm thinking three-dimensionally. And then I have line G, H, which goes through the plane. It, in fact, it cuts right through the plane here at point G. And you'll notice that this part of the line here is dashed. And we do that in geometry when we're drawing diagrams. That represents a line that's behind something else, so I can't actually see that. But then it pokes out from underneath the, uh, the flat surface here, and then I can see the line down here through point H. We'll take a look at some drawing in a little bit. <clears throat> Another term is intersection, and it's the set of points that two figures have in common. So the intersection of two lines is a point. So here we have line L, and line M, and they intersect at point R. 
so two lines always intersect in one point. The intersection of two planes is a line. So here we have plane R, which is this kind of flat one here, and then we have plane P, which is kind of going more vertically, and they intersect each other in a line, and that's line L. So line L is the intersection of planes R and P. Okay, let's do a couple example problems together. So here I have a diagram with a plane and a line on the plane and a line going through the plane. So number one says to name the plane. So in order to name this plane, I can name it plane R and use an uppercase cursive R. I can also choose any three non-collinear points on the plane. So I could call this plane ABC. I could call it plane CAT. I could call it plane TCB, okay? But what I cannot call it, the one thing I cannot call it, I'm not gonna write that in caps. I cannot use three collinear points. I cannot call it ATB because those line, those points all lie on line M. Give another name for line L. So line L is this vertical line that goes through the plane. So I can name that ST. <clears throat> I could reverse those letters and call it TS. It can also name it plane UT, okay, or plane SU, okay. And notice that when I'm writing this, I have the line over the top with the arrows on the ends. Number three, name the intersection of L and M. Since L is just a lowercase cursive letter and M is a lowercase cursive letter, I know that that refers to the two lines, and the two lines intersect in a single point, and that is point T. Number four, are points U, T, and B collinear? Points U, T, U, T and B do not lie on the same line, so no, they're not co non-collinear. Are points U, T, and B coplanar? Are they on the same plane? Well, actually they are, and believe it or not, even though we don't have that plane drawn, you can picture a plane that contains all three of those points, so yes, they are coplanar. Are points C, A, T, and S coplanar? These are not. Points C, A, and T are coplanar, but you cannot draw a plane that would contain all four of those points. You can draw one that would contain any three of them, but not all four of those. So those are non-coplanar. <clears throat> Here's another diagram, and it basically looks like a cube or some other sort of rectangular prism sitting on top of a plane. Okay, so, and all of my vertices are labeled. Those are the points, the corners of that, and then my plane is labeled as well. So how many planes do we see in the figure? Well, um, I see the, the top of the box, I see the back and the front, and the left and the right, and then the bottom of the box is actually part of plane P, which is like this big piece of paper on the bottom. So there are actually six planes in this figure. <clears throat> Number two, name the intersection of plane FGC and plane P. Well, plane P is the one on the bottom, and plane FGC is that side of the cube, or shape, that contains those three points. So here's F, here's G, and here's C. So that would be kind of this right-hand side of this. So where does this plane that contains F, G, and C, the right side of the cube, intersect the plane on the bottom? And that would be in line BC. And I'm actually gonna write that as a line because even though it looks like it's a segment, it does actually continue forever, even though I haven't drawn it. And number three, are points H, E, A, and C coplanar? So let's find those H, E, and A, and then point C. And actually they are not, because points H, E, and A are part of the left side of this cube, and point C is over here on the back bottom right. So no, those are not coplanar, because I cannot draw a plane that would contain all four of those points. <coughs> And let's do a couple of these. Draw and label a figure for each relationship. So number one says M intersects P at T. And this is a little tricky, so I need to figure out what each of these shapes is. Because M is a lowercase cursive letter, that's gonna be a line. Because P is an uppercase cursive letter, that's gonna be a plane. And because T is an uppercase printed letter, that's gonna be a point. 
So basically, I have, a, I have a line that's intersecting a plane at a particular point. <clears throat> so let's start by drawing our plane. And I'm going to draw it as kind of a parallelogram here. And I have to label it. Oops, that's not a very good P. Let's try that again. Something like that. Okay, now line M goes through that plane and it intersects the plane at point T. And now because this is coming, coming down and this part of the line I cannot see because it's behind the plane and then it comes out down here. So there's point T, the point of intersection. And then for the line, I need to label it, so I'm going to put a lowercase cursive m near one of the arrows. doesn't matter if it's the one at the top or the bottom, but it needs to be by one of those. Number two here <clears throat> says A lies on L. A, because it's uppercase printed, is a point. L, because it's lowercase cursive, is a line. So I'm going to start by drawing line L. Don't forget to put the arrows on the end. Label it and anywhere on that line is point A. So put a point there and an uppercase, uh, uppercase printed A next to it. Number three says RS lies in M. So RS, this is a line that contains the points R and S, and it lies in M because this is an uppercase cursive M. This is a plane. And notice it says lies in M. It doesn't intersect it. So let's start by drawing my plane as a parallelogram. Label it. I know we're not really used to drawing writing cursive letters a lot. Okay, and line RS lies in the plane. So it's actually, it's almost like as though you were setting a pencil on a tabletop. And be sure you label it with two points, R and S. It doesn't matter where they are, it doesn't matter if S comes before R or which. And for our last one here, we have point A, which is 0, 1, and point B, which is 2, 3, are collinear, but points A, B, and C are non-collinear. So let's go ahead and graph these. So point 0, 1, that's going to be point A, and B is 2, 3, okay? And I can actually draw a line through those because they are collinear. And actually, any two points are collinear because you can draw a line through any two points. <clears throat> but it says points A, B, and C are non-collinear. So point C can be anywhere on this graph except on that line. So I could put it down here. I could actually put it up in the second quadrant or the third quadrant if I want. Okay? So points A and B lie on the same line, but point C does not lie on the same line with those. So in this section, we've learned a lot of vocabulary a lot of notation, and in geometry notation is actually pretty important. You need to be able to um, define things, understand where things are, and write them correctly.